Welcome, my beautiful souls. Uh, today we are going to do a reading for Aries. Uh, this is for December 2024, though time is fluid. Um, and what I mean by that is I just feel like a video will find you. You'll find it in divine timing right when you need it. Um, so, but I am going to put December on it. Um, this is going to be for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising. Many of you are intuitively guided to the readings now. And I just want to thank you for trusting your intuition. Your guides want to thank you. You know, I read through my spirit guides who connect to your guides. That's why a reading can resonate with so many different people. Plus, I feel like we're all big one soul family anyway. Um, and I definitely want you to feel comfortable asking your guides to give you confirmation. You know, whether that be, you should definitely feel the reading. Um, you know, if it just doesn't feel like you're reading, then this one just may not be it, or there may be some messages for you. Um, but anyway, so Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, those intuitively guided. Some of you may be in love with an Aries platonically, romantically. You know, whatever brought you, I say welcome. And let's go ahead and get into your reading. Oh, I do want to mention that I am... Um, I am offering, I did a little video where um, I'm offering holiday gift certificates um, that you can buy for a loved one. And um, the minute you buy it, I put their name or your name, you know, like however you want me to do it. I put you in my schedule. I put them in my schedule. And um, then you can decide whether, you know, you want me to do a reading based off what you know or you'd rather me wait. Um, until your loved one gives me their questions. So it doesn't matter however you want to do it. And there really is no expiration date so that, you know, if they don't want it right away. That's also okay. Um, and I did have someone say, did, can I buy one for myself? Of course you can. Um, I do a lot of personal readings and, um, they're very, very in depth. I mean, they're usually two hours long. Some are three hours long. It's whatever they need is what I give you a reading. Um, so anyways, I just want to let you know I have that going on. Um, all right, Aries and those intuitively guided, let's get into your reading. So we're going to use a few different decks. I brought out the Romance Angels in case romance comes up. Um, but doesn't it always? And you know, why does romance come up all the time? Well, because in my readings, I'm really doing a life reading. You know, I'm looking at all areas, um, you know, your money, your relationships, um, just all areas, whatever comes up. Uh, so we are also going to use the major arcanas again for this month. Um, I use these for like bullet points, but I just love them in a reading. Uh, you know, how I've been explaining my readings lately, which makes sense is I'm really doing layers and that's why the readings are long that's why you need to have patience um or if you're not into a long reading then you know you probably clicked off already but anyway so like mother mary to me is level one and then the major arcanas will be level two your main spread which will be with the tarot of dreams level three level four and when I say levels, I mean, we're going deeper and deeper and deeper. We'll use the Gilded Tarot. And then level five will be the Romance Angels if they're called into play. But I already know that they're, they're going to be. All right. So let's go ahead. First of all, let me bring the lid down. And get started we're going to start with mother mary get her beautiful words of wisdom for you give him a cut okay okay i was just going to say i was going to shuffle to see if anything else wanted to come out but there it is so let's start with the first one. We have honesty. Honesty. I am in touch with my true feelings, 
regarding this situation. Hmm. So if there's anything you're going through, it's just asking you to be honest. You know, like, don't lie to yourself. That reminds me of, like, the Eight of Swords or the Two of Swords, where there's a blindfold. Um, it, sometimes it means there's something I may not want to face. I often feel, though, you're better off facing it. Because I feel like the longer we wear a blindfold, the bigger that monster seems that we don't want to face. And then we take the blindfold off and we're like, oh, well, it wasn't quite as bad as I thought. But anyways, honesty. And then we have children. Interesting. Children. My heart is filled with love for children, which creates miracles and positive changes for them and me. Honesty and children. Okay. Um, you know, through the spread or through your reading, we'll understand why there why Mother Mary brought those out. But let's go ahead and bring in the Gilded Chiro now. A little hard to shuffle. Um, and everything's always pre-shuffled before I even begin a reading. That's when I'm really just meditating on you. You know, um, any special messages. All right. That's a lot. Or should I just take them? Okay. I feel like I'm just supposed to take them, so I'm going to take them. All right. We have, well, hello, Emperor. So there you are. Um, this is your major arcana for Aries. Um, though the emperor can mean quite a few different things. It can be a father figure. Uh, you know, we do have children right here. He's looking right over at the children. Um, can be business ownership or leader, like some type of a leader. You know, the emperor is like the leader of the people. Um, the emperor leads through plans. I feel like the emperor is very methodical. You know, like I put plans in place, you know, think of his opposite, which is the empress. She goes more by the seat of her pants, where he feels more comfortable, like having a plan in place. But it is so that they that um, the emperor can help others, you know, great leadership abilities doesn't always mean that's, you know, what we're showing. All right. We have the Hierophant. It's about your faith. Um, you know, is your faith still strong? We have the strength card. We have the death card. And I'll give you the signs in a second. I just want to put them all out first. We have the full Interesting that the fool is coming after the death card because the death card really talks about closing of doors, um, transformation, and the fool definitely is like, sign me up, I'm ready, let's go. Fool's about taking a leap of faith. Uh, he's looking right back at the death card though, so I feel like, you know, it could certainly speak about a chapter that is meant to come to an end. Um... And because it's a fool, you know, I don't feel like there's any, mm, like, I don't feel hardship with it. You know, the fool's about taking a leap of faith after the fact. So let's see what follows that. Well, hello, Will. So this is just talking about a destined journey. And then last but not least is the chariot. Holy cards. Okay, so let's slide these all over. Now, I don't really, I don't read them by signs. I read them by energy, but I will give you the signs. Um, hopefully you can see all that. Slide over a little more. So we have your major arcana, Aries. We have Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, um, and Cancer. However, none of that has to apply. Okay. So, let's look at this. 
a lot of cards, but I feel like they're telling their own little story. You know, as I move these along, I see now the death card is in the middle um, of this line here. So there, so it does feel like there is a need to close a door. You know, maybe that's what honesty is also about. The strength card coming right before that tells me there must be something that you've overcome. I feel like a strength card is about an inner journey. Um, but it's about finding balance within yourself. Sometimes it can relate to like addictions or, you know, things or people that I know I need to cut out because they're affecting me. They're affecting, and when I say me, I mean you, um, but they're, they're affecting you in some way. I also love the Hierophant looking over the strength card because I feel like if there's anything I've been having a hard time overcoming, I feel like this is giving me extra faith, you know, the faith to know that I'm probably, mm, I don't know why I said probably, that I'm doing the right thing. Um, because it's like the strength card, the overcoming. And in the strength card's energy, what you really find when you do that deep dive within is your own courage, your own power. So it's a very powerful type of energy, but it does take like a deep look within, you know, just understanding it. And again, I feel like that's what honesty might be talking about. Um, because it's like allowing you, well, allowing you, but it's, it's like you're taking care of yourself first. You know, you're overcoming whatever it is that you know that you probably needed to overcome um, or Let's just, again, you're allowing a chapter to end. You know, maybe I didn't want this chapter to end, but it does feel like the best thing, to be honest, because then again, the fool, right? The fool, first of all, is someone who doesn't carry the past with them, um, certainly has a past, but instead of carrying like the pain, the heartache, um, whatever may have been, the foal really just carries the wisdom of the lessons that the foal has learned along this journey. This signifies that you're, you are stepping on um, a new path. And with the wheel being right after the foal, it's a destined path. And not only that, then you have the chariot. So that can really speak about unlimited potential. Um, but the chariot does need balance to um, really become unlimited. You know, again, kind of like the strength card, the chariot is the balance of the feminine and the masculine, the light and the dark within ourselves. Big rainbow behind there. So, uh, you know, to me, it feels like this is starting you, yes, potentially on a new path. And it doesn't have to mean all areas of your life. Uh, and I feel like the more you can step into the foal's energy, which means, you know, you're just allowing your energy to be free and clear and you're willing to take a step of um, a leap of faith. But because, again, destiny is right behind that, I feel like your soul will know that this is right. You know, you'll feel it on a soul level. All right, let's bring in the Tarot of Dreams. And let's go deeper. Let's see what this new journey is, this new path you're stepping upon. Again, it's, it's you know, a soul's journey. What I mean by that is because it's destined, I feel like it's it must be a seed that your soul had already planted. And this is just the right time. This is the right time. All right. We have the King of Swords. King of Swords can be a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. 
Um, this would talk about integrity, truth, honesty. It can be you. Could also, I mean, we do have, um, no, we don't have any air signs out. I always find it interesting because I always feel like this king is like behind bars. Now, does, did he put himself there or did someone else put him there? We have the Page of Wands, a little risk taker. Interesting how this page is like giving me the side eye. You know, I feel like it's talking about um, kind of charming type of energy. Maybe someone's trying to charm me. And by the way, when I say me, I mean you. I'm just literally an Aries right now. So, this tells me there may be something that you do need to take, again, like the full, a chance on. Um, I'm also picking up that for a few of you, there could be an element of, like, let's say something a father needed to overcome. Whether he did or not, I don't know yet. Um, but it could, it could be like, you know, like the strength card could talk about, let's just say addiction to alcohol and maybe my father was an alcoholic and then I feel like, and then maybe the child becomes an alcoholic. Um, and listen, I feel like that's for very few of you, but it may, it may say that that's what you need to look at. You know, again, it may just be something, you know, some type of energy um, a father carried that has gone down to the children or at least one of the children. Again, I don't feel like that's for everyone, but I do feel like it's for someone. Hmm. Marriage card. Interesting. The marriage card. Is that a good thing? Maybe. Or maybe not. We have the Nine of Pentacles. I love the Nine of Pentacles with the Emperor. Um, because the Nine of Pentacles talks about successful self-employment. Um, it's about independence. You know, one being able to take care of themselves financially. I love this for creating a business. Like, I definitely feel like if this is, you know, someone's thinking about creating a business, or maybe you already have, and this could signify you're going to start seeing the fruits of your labor. Maybe it's been a little while. Um, it is a nine. And it's interesting because... I do feel the nine, the person in the nine of pentacles um, has a very independent nature and sitting next to the marriage card, or let's just call it a commitment card. Mm, it kind of makes me feel like that may be what's ending, but I don't see you like, I don't really see you suffering from that. Really quite the opposite. I feel like, um, you know, there may be some type of commitment and maybe there was a lack of a commitment where, uh, because the death card's right above it, you know, where you just felt like I wasn't receiving that commitment. And then you move into the nine of pentacles again, very independent type of energy. I can take care of myself. I feel like that's important. Some of you with the full right above the nine of pentacles, again, it may be an element you're just stepping into. Um, I also feel like if, um, and you know, it doesn't have to be self-employment. It could just mean anything that you're putting your focus on as it relates to your money. This may be a time when you really, truly start to see again, those, the fruits of your labor. 
Um, but I also love the full writing by the Nine of Pentacles. So some of you, this may just be the beginning, but you may be here looking for confirmation. Am I on the right path? Definitely feels like you are. Excuse me one second. Okay. Um, well, let's keep going. We have hmm, the Four of Swords healing. Healing. We have the chariot. Under the chariot. So it's like double cancer. I don't know why I'm taking so many cards across, but it just feels right. Um, I feel like I also feel like whatever you have gone through, whatever you are going through, Four Swords speaks about healing and it's right under the wheel. So destiny. Um, probably important. You know, I feel like some of you you might have had it rough in love lately and um could have even cut ties with someone. Um, but then I feel like so then you put your concentration on your money, you know, on a business. And I do feel often like when we're in situations we can't really control, then one of the best things to do is refocus our mind, like, you know, open up our creativity. Um, it's interesting we have two chariots, though. Hmm. I have a feeling it's each chariot's for, like, I, I have a feeling it's a, talking about two people and each having the chariot. Strength card, double Leo, under the King of Swords. Interesting because I feel that King of Swords is behind bars. And I don't mean like literally, though, though it could be. Um, but then the Strength card underneath it. So I do feel like there's something this King needs to break free from. There's something like internally that um, I feel it's making this King feel stuck. But this is energy that this king can overcome. But he is the one who has to overcome it. I'm saying he. It can be a she. Because remember, we we carry masculine and feminine energy. Um, but yeah, I'm just getting this feeling that this king... You know, this king could be in a relationship that just isn't what I thought it would be. You know what I mean? It could be, that could be, you know, I feel like there's a couple different things. Again, overcoming whatever the strength card is for you. Um, finding that courage to really look deep. I feel like that's what this king needs to do. Because I do feel the king can free himself. Not only free himself, but also heal. Um, and eights are about a new beginning. We have the full. That's a new beginning. We have the full connected right to your will. That's your destiny. Um, you know, and sometimes our soul does come down here to learn not always easy lessons, sometimes difficult lessons. You know, I had a conversation with someone who had a master number 11, which I also do. And um, I feel like those who have master numbers for their life path, um, I do feel like our soul asked for, like, like, give me some difficult lessons, you know, earthly lessons, so that my soul can truly expand. So if you had it rough, and I know I've had it, I've had a rough life, but I've also had a lot of blessings. Um but I feel like now I know why, you know, like once I really learned about life path numbers and that or numerology, it just opened my eyes to more. We have the four of pentacles. Hello, lovers. Interesting. The lover's right under the marriage card. 
Uh, first of all, this is the card of Gemini. The meaning of it is ahead of a hard decision. And that could certainly be the case. Coming over the under the um, under the marriage card. But you know, it could talk about like the ending of one relationship, but because a new relationship is destined to come in now. This may just be the time. Death card again. Double Scorpio now on the table. Well, I have to say, you know, you can read this a couple different ways. But the first thing I noticed that the death card's coming under the Nine of Pentacles. And, um, you know, I read the Nine of Pentacles as a very independent type nature. Can talk about maybe um, you're not going to be single, you know, for long. It doesn't mean it takes away what you have, the things that you have built. Quite the opposite. I feel like, you know, let's say I was in a previous relationship that, for whatever reason, didn't go right. Maybe someone, you know, again, had some problems that uh, only they could deal with. Um, and maybe I did have to let that go and, and leave them to deal with their own problem. Um, and I'm not going to, and I, I certainly don't feel like that would be an easy choice. Um, but nonetheless, maybe it's the only choice you really had. Um, because I am feeling that the lovers is new. Um, and I feel like the death card is saying, you know, this may be the end of you being single. Let's not forget, by the time we get down here, we already have gone through this healing period. We're already willing to jump into the fool's energy. You know, does it necessarily mean that I'm ready and willing to take a leap of faith? Well, maybe not, but I feel like that's what the Hierophant's here for, like faith. That's what the Hierophant is about, your faith. You know, trusting in your faith, trusting in divine Again, this feels like divine timing. So what I'm saying is I feel like by the time we get to the lovers, the healing process has taken place. Doesn't mean you're completely healed. Let's see if I can pick that up. Come on. What the heck? We have the Eight of Pentacles. Now, it did show in reverse. And I'm going to leave it in reverse because um, it came face up. And, you know, like before we begin a reading, I have a little discussion with my guides. And, you know, I'll say whether I really want to read reversals or not. Because I don't always read reversals. Um, but one of the things I do say is if it comes face up in reverse, then I'm going to leave it that way. So the Eight of Pentacles, you know, the Eight of Pentacles talks about the willingness to go into something as the apprentice, um, knowing that if you put your focus on it, that you can truly grow it. But it feels like because it's in reverse, maybe you don't believe that. Maybe you're not focusing on that. Hmm. Maybe some of you have the ability to create, um, but maybe fear stops you from creating because maybe you think you don't know everything you need to know. You know, in the Eight of Pentacles for me is it talks about, I feel like success, but I got to be willing to step into it. Again, I don't need to know everything. In the Eight of Pentacles, I will learn as I go. I feel like some of you, you could have had um, 
It's almost like there's something that stopped you. Hmm. Another eight, by the way. Well, ton of wands, that would stop you in your tracks. Ten of Wands, um, it's really the energy of uh, feeling like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. Interesting, it's mirroring the Strength card. And I feel like because we have the Death card twice, it feels like a good thing because I feel like that allows this Ten of Wands to end, but I also have to allow it to end. You know, I feel like this is where you want to ask yourself a couple questions. You know, do you have the tendency to put, like, all the responsibilities on your shoulders? Um, have you learned the fine art of delegation? You know, can you trust others or do you feel like, no, I got to do it myself? And I mean that in work, but I also mean that in love. Um, because I do feel in the Ten of Wands, it feels like it's too much. Too much, too much, too much. Um, some of you, I feel like that may be why there could be a disconnect from someone. Because there may be something that they had to overcome. But it definitely feels like it affected you. You know, let's just use drinking, for example. You know, maybe that's what this king it is why he's behind these bars. You know, I'm doing something that doesn't put me in a good frame of mind, um, doesn't allow me to be all I can be. Instead, I feel like what it's done is it's kind of put, like this person has put the responsibility on you. And I feel like you can only take that for so long. Um, the chariot right above it, I feel like this is saying I'm leaving. Like, I've ha I can't take it anymore. I've had enough. Um, I also want to say for those who, let's say you just started a business, um, but you're, you know, you're finding that there feels like there is resistance. I feel like that can come to an end. Again, I feel like for a lot of people, a lot of the readings I'm doing, it feels like money is opening up like creativity, um, the ability to increase your finances. I feel like that's going to be for a lot of signs. Um, and I see that here for you too. But I just feel like there's something you're not trusting yourself in. You know, will I be any good? Will, will people seek me out? And I feel like the answer is yes. Because it's showing success for you. But you've got to know that. Like, you know, and I feel like don't give up on that element. Now, again, because it's mirroring the strength card. And I do feel like it's this king who probably has more of the issue. I feel like that I may want to give up because it's their... You know, this isn't, I'm not saying this to be mean, but I feel like each of us has our own personal issues that we have to deal with that really no one else can help us with. You know, it's an inner journey. Um, but I do feel like this person can overcome. But do I wait around? Mm. And it doesn't even have to talk about love. It just may be someone that you know in your life. Look at this, we have the world on the bottom of the deck. So the world talks about a new chapter that's opening up. Um, and that's why we're seeing the death card. The world is a very spiritual time, probably for the rest of your life. This is when you really do have faith. Because I feel like the world doesn't show up until you're ready. And look what's right in the middle of this portal. The full. There's the full getting ready to step onto a destined time. So this should be a good time. Palace of Swords underneath that. Um, I also want to say that 
there may be a few of you who have been in like some type of relationship where I feel like someone could have like cut off communication. Um, and first of all, I feel like that's a horrible, I, I hate when that happens. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want that to happen to any of you, you know, where you care for someone and then they just cut off communication. But here's why I think they cut off communication. Um, I feel like they know that there's something they need to deal with. And that's just that. You know what I mean? Like, I feel it's that simple. Though I don't feel like it's going to be simple for them. Though I do feel like they can overcome. So, you know, is this king moving forward? Is this king you? You know, do you believe in yourself? Do you believe that you have the ability to create abundance for yourself? Because it's showing it. That means I know you can do it. You know, but again, the fool's energy feels like one of the most important energies here. Though I have to say, maybe the death card's even more important. Because if I don't close a certain chapter, then the world can't open Right? I can't walk through this portal if I'm still in this portal, so to speak. All right, let's bring in the Guild of Tarot. Interesting how I'm doing your reading. What do I have? Six cards across. Wow. I can't even remember the last time I did it like that. It's a lot of cards, I know. Actually, going to bring this down just a hair more so you can see everything. Okay. Let's go ahead and give the Gilded Tarot a cut. And one of the reasons, um, oh, look at that. Four cups. Hmm. We're going to take it. How could we not? All right, so let's talk about the four cups. Interesting, I was talking about drinking. And it's making me feel that way again. Why can I not pick up any cards today? All right, so the Four Cups. Talks about discontentment, boredom in one's life. The Four Cups is about learning to use your spiritual discernment as energies start moving towards you. This one's bringing a cup in. You can literally see it. It looks like it's coming from the hand of God. But you have to use your spiritual discernment whether... You're going to accept it or not. You know, to me, it definitely feels like I want to change. I'm not so happy in the current energy, in the current moment. But I feel like this reading is showing you that if you accept this change, especially if you feel discontent within your life right now, you just might be very, very surprised what this cup is. I'm not going to call it romance yet. Or love. But it is a cup of fulfillment. But I'm the one who has to say yes to it. You know, I need to trust in my spiritual team that this cup that's being presented to me is of a good thing. Coming over the king. Um, actually, I want to bring it up though. So, it's coming over the Emperor and the King. Ten of Wands again, but it's shown in reverse. And I like that. I like that because it's coming over the Hierophant. So, it's like you're receiving a blessing. It feels like the weight of the world is now being lifted off your shoulders. And I also love that it's touching the Page of Wands, who, again, is my little risk taker. Some of you, I feel like it's about taking a risk within your finances. Because I could see this is perfect energy of working from home and being successful. But I, I just get a feeling that some of you, you're uncertain about that. But how much do I love that the Hierophant brings out the, the reversal of the Ten of Wands? 
I mean, if you've been feeling heavy, you know, if you've been feeling like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, I feel like this is an opportunity for it to end. There must be something awful good in that cup because I feel like it changes. It changes your life. It takes away the heaviness of those wands. You know, Ten of Wands can also speak about a lot of responsibilities, but also that being lifted. You know, I feel like some of you must have prayed for this energy and your prayers are not only being heard, but it feels like they're being answered. But now it feels like it's saying, but we want you to take this risk, take this chance, jump into the fool's energy. And the Page of Wands is the person who would do it. Okay. So again, that cup within the four cups um, is changing your world. Hmm. We have the Five of Wands coming over the Marriage card, but also the Strength card, and then the Death card. Five of Wands is a lot of drama. It's a lot of fighting. Interesting that it's also, again, touching the strength card, and we have the strength card here. You can certainly talk about a current relationship that just was not going well. Um, and I'm not even going to say marriage, because I don't have justice out. Um, I'm just going to say what was or what I had hoped to be a committed relationship. Feels like it turned more into, like, Fighting. Let's say I was with this king and this king does have some issue that I can't help him with. He's got to help himself. There could have been a lot of fighting about that. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like for some of you, you left. Um, you couldn't take it anymore. You couldn't take the drama. You couldn't take the fighting. And I feel like you really had no alternative if, again, you wanted, you know... Like, I feel bad for this king because I do feel like this king is dealing with something. And, you know, again, it's an inner journey. However, I feel like I can only do so much. And again, if this king is cut off communication, mm, though with the five of wands here, to me, it's a lot of fighting. It's a lot of ego. Um, you know, no one wants to back down in that energy. And I feel like the only thing, because it is a five, so it does want change. So the only thing I can really do in that energy is remove myself from it. No more drama. I feel like that's what some of you were saying. No more drama. Okay. And that may be why we're moving into the Nine of Pentacles next, which... Independent energy. Well, hello, beautiful Knight of Pentacles. Um, Knight of Pentacles. It's a knight you can truly trust. I read this as our guardian angel. Or let me put it this way. I feel it is divine. It's divine energy. And it really speaks about coming in at the right time. You know, I can't make this night come before it's time. Though, as I say that, sometimes this night, because remember, this night, his message or the message is, I come at the right time, not before, not after. So, you know, when is the right time? Well, now because I feel like I've left the drama, because... Now I'm letting go of something, which reverses that Ten of Wands. So now the weight of the world doesn't feel like it's on my shoulders any longer. I'm more in an independent type energy. And now the Knight of Pentacles comes. So the Knight of Pentacles talks about bringing a pentacle into your life. And I don't feel like it's a one-time thing. But I also love that it's touching the fools. So I feel like that's what it's asking you for. You know, when you jump into the fools energy, then it's the right time for this 
pentacle. Um, and let's talk about that pentacle because in the Knight of Pentacles, the pentacle that the Knight brings in is truly meant to en enhance your life. It is a blessing, but it's a well deserved blessing. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just like, hey, let's throw areas of blessing. No, you deserve this. You know, you deserve it. And it is the right time. I kind of love that it's also coming over your money factor, but it's also touching the full. And it's touching the death card. So, you know, it's very clear to me, anyway, that there is something, like it's using the sickle that this death card is carrying, you know, and I'm cutting it out. And I feel like, listen... I feel like you shouldn't feel bad about it because I feel like this is something you've given your all to. Um, and if it's relating to, like, uh, let's say love, because, again, that four of cups, that cup coming in can represent love. But if it's with this king, things weren't going well. Um, and I do feel like you left. So the Knight of Pentacles feels like, okay, maybe that's what you needed to do. You know, you have a right to live life the way you that you want to live your life. And I also feel with the heart in here, it is about your morals, your beliefs, um, your faith. So this feels like the right time. Um, the Knight of Pentacles, its first lesson is patience. You know, I'm, I may want something before it's time. But the night, that doesn't move this night. The, the night knows when it's the right time. And I do feel like it's when I'm in the fool's energy. It's when I'm willing to begin this next journey. And I'm saying willing, but everything feels like, why would I not want to? Well, because maybe I don't know what it, what it all consists of yet. Well, part of it is healing. Part of it is abundance. We have the full again. Um, it's interesting. We have the full with the full, the chariot with the chariot. It can talk about two different people. Um, and this may talk about like a soulmate who is predestined like already written, so to speak. We have, well, hello, lovers again. But now the lovers is over the chariot. Hello, lovers. Remember in the four of cups? There's a cup coming towards you. Now it's mirroring it, the lovers. Yes, head over heart decision. But I feel like because the fool is right before it, I've already made the decision. And the Knight of Pentacles, I feel like there's nothing I need to fear here. You know, the Knight of Pentacles is not going to bring me something that um, is going to harm my life. Quite the opposite. It's truly meant to expand your life. So, hello, lovers. We have Judgment, your spiritual team, who is calling you to the present moment. And... They call you to the present moment for a few different reasons. Number one, this is where your signs are sent. Like, this is where your guidance is sent. If you're looking for guidance, try to bring your mind, like, try to calm your mind and be in the present moment. And I promise you, you'll feel the guidance. You know, you do need to, again, um, be open to that. But, Judgments coming over at number eight, which is about a new beginning. So here we go. We have the five of pentacles over the four of pentacles. I feel like some of you left. You left a household. Um, maybe, you know, again, it feels like I really didn't have a choice. I mean, I had a choice, but... It feels to me like the energy just became so difficult that, in a way, that is my choice. We have 
Oh, look at this. Temperance over the lovers. Wow. So, first of all, you you have a couple cards that speak of patience. And that is so something can come to full fruition. Temperance asks you to trust in divine timing. Right? All in divine timing. When you're ready. You know, when you're truly ready. So, yes, yeah, some of you may have left a relationship and now, and I'm saying now, but this could be, you know, there could certainly be some time in between because, again, I feel like I may have left a relationship um, and was working on myself, becoming more independent. And it feels like that's what my guardian angel wanted, like for me, you know, to start putting energy back into me again. Now, this kind of feels, again, like love. Two lovers, two chariots. Well, we have multiple. Um, multiples of quite a few signs. But divine timing. You know, when temperance comes out, to me, it's like it gives you the opportunity to kind of just let go. You know, maybe it's like I pour my energy into my creativity and I let divine take care of the rest. Okay. Um, by the way, I also card is Sagittarius, the high priestess, your intuition, instinctively knowing when it's time to close the door. Um, really, I love the high priestess under the knight of pentacles because this is you open to receiving what this knight is bringing in for you. And remember, the knight of pentacles, the pentacle that this knight brings in, and again, I don't feel it's a one-time thing. I feel like once I'm in a certain energy, this knight gives me pentacle after pentacle after pentacle, as long as I'm using them to expand my life. So your intuition, it's like it's going to sing. It's going to let you know. You have so much divine energy that's wrapped around your intuition. We have the Six of Cups. And then we have the Hierophant again. So double Taurus. Look at that, though. The Hierophant, your belief system, mirroring judgment, your spiritual team. We just want you to have faith that things can work out in your favor. And sometimes even the difficult things that you go through, it's still working out in your favor. But it may be, you know, it can be difficult because it may talk about like the closing of one door, but it is so a new door can open. You have, you know, the death card, it is a closing of a door. Um, but it literally is so a new door can open and then judgment. Well, there's your new door, the world. There's your new door, the full. I mean, hello. Six of cups under the full, um, could certainly speak about someone you already know. And if that's the case, this would be someone who you would have happy memories about. You know, someone when you think about them, it would bring a smile to your face. Some of you, I do feel like there may be some movement, like you may be moving. Like maybe you left a relationship. Some of you may be, be moving back to your hometown. And maybe that means I had to quit a job. But maybe I'm inspired to do my own thing because of that. All right, let's go below. I wasn't going to, but I feel like I want to now. We have the Hermit, um, Carter Virgo. You know, the Hermit can certainly talk about uh, the Dark Knight of the Soul going through some type of experience that was very difficult. 
this is, you know, very close to strength cards energy where I have to look within. I feel like sometimes in the hermit's energy, I'm brought down to my knees. But then I start seeking the light and the light is what I find in the hermit's energy. I often feel this is like natural healing abilities, um, but maybe I didn't know that. The hermit's now shining his beacon of light outwardly. So maybe to help others. This is a very spiritual energy. But it's like after the dark night of the soul. You know, some of you have gone through something difficult. And then I feel like somehow your guides um, showed you something or... I don't know. I get this feeling like you just know things are going to get better. You know, the Hermit's also about final reflection. So it is important that, you know, and it's the nine. So it can talk about a previous chapter. You know, that's now coming to an end. We could look at that as like 2024 is about to close and 2025 is about to open. All right. We have the Page of Pentacles. And then we have the Nine of Swords. Makes sense, because I do feel like you've been through something very difficult. Um, Nine of Swords talks about a lot of worry, but the meaning of the card is it's unnecessary worry. You know, coming under temperance, it it's, feels to me like temperance is saying, trust within me, trust within your faith, trust within divine timing, and don't, you know, try not to put a lot of worry around it. Sometimes the worry is because I don't know what's going to happen next. Um, but you do want to reflect upon that. You know, the Nine of Swords is mirroring the Five of Wands. So if this is talking about like a new relationship opening up, it makes sense. You know, it makes sense there'd be a little fear. Like, you know, chances are I don't want it what I already had because I ended up with the Ten of Wands. I ended up carrying, carrying the brunt of the responsibilities. The Page of Pentacles right before that, I feel like this is telling you that this is probably a spiritual lesson, even a karmic lesson. But again, remember, if this was a karmic lesson, you know, and I can even see it with this king. Let's just say this king drinks too much. And I don't know why I'd keep using that for an example. Um, this king's soul may have wanted to come into this lifetime to break that like to break that addiction for not only oneself, but for future generations, because it does feel generational to me for some reason. And I feel like the Page of Pentacles, um, you know, if we think about life as... Or let's say we think of Earth as our classroom, which it really is. And our souls come down here really for soul expansion, to grow, to learn. You know, uh, usually different experiences that I've already had in, let's say, previous lifetimes. This could be a repeat of something, though, and another opportunity, another lifetime to, like, pay that karma off. It may not be your karma. It may be this king's karma. Don't make it your karma. Um, but what I'm saying is I feel like the lessons are for your soul expansion. And I know some people hate when I say that because it's like, why would my soul want to come down here and have these horrible experiences? Well, it is teaching you something. You know, and listen, I know I've had some very difficult unbelievable things happen that you think you wouldn't be able to overcome. But my faith has helped me overcome. 
And you know what else is interesting? Um, like many of you know that I lost my son to alcoholism. That may be why I keep bringing up um, alcohol. Um, but something I've learned is that was his soul's lesson. Like that's what his soul came here to not only experience, but maybe to, you know, try to cut those ties. Hmm. Interesting because his father is an alcoholic. His grandfather is an alcoholic. So. Yeah, I'm feeling that now all of a sudden stronger than ever. And by the way, I do feel like my son, I don't feel it. I know that my son is, um, you know, one of definitely one of my major guides now. Uh, but I also feel like he helps guide all of us. And those who have had loss, you understand what I'm saying. All right, well, let's keep going. The temperance is telling you, like, there's no reason to worry. Instead, it's about trusting. Trusting in divine timing. Trust within your faith. Know that it's natural that doors be closed. You know, that's just part of life. Like, you know, cycles end. New cycles begin. We have the three swords, so I kind of want that cycle to end. Over the death card. Next to the nine of swords. So there's where your worry is at. I don't want to get my heart broken again. I get it. We all get it. But what's mirroring that? First of all, the fool. So I don't feel like you're going to get your heart broken again. And I say that because what's also mirroring it is the knight of pentacles, your guardian angel. And your intuition. hard to believe after you've had heartache that you know it won't happen again but with your intuition nice and strong I don't feel like it'll happen again we have the three of wands beautiful so two threes next to each other and they are completely opposite energies the Three of Swords, Heartache and Loss. The Three of Wands, Optimism. Present moment energy. Just what judgment is asking you to do. The Three of Wands is someone who is living in the present moment, but knows or trusts in divine that their ships will come in in their due time. That's what the Knight of Pentacles tells you. So I feel like you're trusting that more and more. You know, it's like the letting go of what wasn't working, the letting go of the hardships, the allowing of oneself to heal, and then the willingness to take another leap of faith because this is a new chapter. But being optimistic, you know, this is someone who's saying that I know miracles happen and I know mine will in the right time. It's a completely different energy than what you've been in. Optimism. It's contagious. Look at this, the chariot again. Wow. So, we have the chariot with the lovers over the chariot. With the Hierophant, over the Ten of Wands, and then the Chariot again. So if we didn't already know that this Ten of Wands can end, the reversal of the Ten of Wands already told us that. And it is also connected to the Hierophant as it is here. You know, the Chariot to me is definitely movement. Um, but it's it's movement because of your faith. Like you're believing, you're believing that this movement is good for you, which it is. And I have a feeling that the lovers is part of this next journey. So, you know, yes, the lovers means ahead of a hard decision. 
But I also feel like it's chemistry. Um, and if you just look at the image, it shows you that. Like, here's the feminine. And it's like, I can feel this energy. I feel it. What am I feeling? The masculine. Masculine is not there yet. But it's like, I feel this energy. That makes sense for soulmates. You know, or even twin flames that we would feel each other's energy even if we're not together yet. But I feel like it's moving you into that energy. And it's making it clear over and over that this truly does have unlimited potential. But one's faith is important, right? Like keeping your faith alive. Um, you know, living according to your morals and not someone else's. But I feel like this means that who's ever in the lovers with you, that your morals are aligned. Your faith is aligned. Um, they're probably spiritual like you are. Some of you may have just begun on a spiritual journey. And you might be amazed when you start to believe in divine and divine timing, what can literally open up in your life. Um, okay, I want to look at the Knight of Pentacles real quick. Something's making me want to go back and just look at this knight. And this knight is being very clear about when the right time is for this knight to come in. The five of Wands right before. So five is change, right? But there's a lot of drama in that energy. It, you know, a lot of fighting, a lot of ego type energy. Um, but I feel, I do feel like the majority of you have left that energy. And that's why the night now shows up. So I just want to look a little deeper at this night. And then you got the full right below or right beside him and right above him. It's also connected to your intuition. Judgment. I will sign I will send you the signs. My job is to help guide you. Our job is to help guide you. Allow us to guide you. Look at this. This is probably why I was feeling I need to look at this knight. Of all the cards on the table that I chose to look at, the Knight of Pentacles was calling to me, and look what it brings out. The marriage card. The commitment card. So, if, let's say, one relationship. Now, can this be the saving of a relationship? Of course it can Especially if this king, who in the very beginning I felt was behind bars, um, you know, has overcome the things that he needed to overcome. Again, that was his personal journey. But this is commitment. This is love. This is not heartache. Knight of Pentacles would not bring you that. And I also find it interesting that the Knight of Pentacles coming over the Nine of Pentacles, where you are in, in independent energy, you know, single, let's say. But then here comes that Knight, and what is he bringing? A Pentacle. Well, add that to the Nine, that turns into the Ten of Pentacles. House of Abundance. House of Loyalty. A house that can truly take root. I feel like you're heading for... A new commitment, even if so, even if it is with someone that you've already had a commitment with, it would be new energy. Wow. And, you know, in temperance, it's like, I told you, I told you, trust in divine timing. I told you, close that old chapter. Allow yourself to be in the fool's energy. Expect the unexpected. And the unexpected is certainly going to put a smile on your face. Hmm. Okay. Um, 
All right. Is there anything else I want to look at? I'm just looking around the board right now. And I think I'm going to come over by judgment and this king with that four of cups because something does change there. We have the six of pentacles. All right. Well, that makes sense because, again, it makes me feel like this king. And I keep wanting to say who's behind bars, but they're his own bars. Um, you know, it's like his own prison that he's got to find. He's got to figure his way out of. Um, but I feel like the Six of Pentacles coming over that energy is saying that, you know, it hasn't been an equal give and take within this relationship. It's been more probably one sided. Um, Six of Pentacles is learning that fine art of give and take. Um, it's a very compassionate type energy. And I feel like that's, you know, that may be what held you in this situation longer than normal is your compassionate heart. You know, like sometimes we want to help fix someone, but there's certain elements that we can't help them. They've got to help themselves. Hmm. All right, I want to look at one more and then I'm going to bring out the romance angels because we do have love on the board now. I'm going to look at the six of cups. We have the knight of wands, passionate, fast moving energy. Did I say the Six of Wands? I meant the Knight of Wands. You remember how I said how the feminine is like she can feel this the masculine's energy? Well, there is the passion. There is the desire. We have the Nine of Wands and the Death card. Nine of Wands is about reflecting upon one's life, at least the last chapter. And it really is so that you can understand how much you yourself have grown. Um, it can talk about, you know, a period of time of a lot of responsibilities, but there is a lot. Um, there's a lot of reasons to be proud of yourself in that energy. And this is the reflecting upon that. You know, I feel the person in the Nine of Wands is like a spirit warrior. Their their journey has really um, gained them some spiritual muscles that I feel like they never lose after that. And then you have the death card again. I mean, this is the third time, I think. But this could represent a Scorpio. Um, I don't know why I'm feeling that for some of you. It could certainly represent a Scorpio. Um I also want to say, for some of you, this could represent someone from back in the day that you had a relationship with um, that may be coming back around again. Now, it could also mean past lives, but I get this feeling like, uh, you know, for, for, I feel like for someone, there was someone I was with, I tried everything I could to help. It didn't, you know, it just didn't help. It just caused more arguments. I really found that there was nothing left I could do but leave. And so you do. And there brings in the Knight of Pentacles. And that Knight of Pentacles, and I, and because I feel like when you leave, some of you are like actually moving. And maybe some of you moving back to like a hometown or even a place like you went to college you know, um, and I know that's not for everyone. Um, and if it's not a physical move, then it's a mental move. If that makes sense. But we keep seeing the death card. Um, and by the way, I feel like f for maybe a lot of us, it's also talking about, um, Part of your spiritual team helping to guide you. 
you know, the death card is following a nine, and nine's, again, final reflection. And then closing the door to that. So it could represent that, too, and then allowing what wants to begin to begin. Because let's not forget who's bringing in this new beginning, the Knight of Pentacles. First of all, you are. But then the Knight of Pentacles is responding to that. And your spiritual team, you know, they're with you through thick and thin, the good and the bad. And they help to guide you through all of that. And it's when we learn that we do have this guidance available to us always. And the more I trust what I'm feeling within my intuition versus a fear-based mind, maybe the better my life just feels. And I want to remind you again that you are moving on into a destined time. You know what? Before we go into the romance angels, let's go up and look at, because we have double fulls. Actually, we have three fulls, I think, on the table. Um, but I do feel like this is similar energy. So I do feel like it's someone else who may ex have experienced similar area or similar energies that you have. And they too may have had to set themselves free. Uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. This doesn't feel like it's been an easy journey. But I also want to remind you of what looks like it wants to open up for you. Hello, Knight of Cups. I have to say I wasn't expecting that. And that is the meaning of this card, an unexpected cup of fulfillment. And I'm looking at the wheel, your destiny. It's connected to these fools. Funny, when I say fools, I'm not putting them down. Fool just means someone who is letting the past go. Is living in the present moment. And who is willing to take a leap of faith. Remember that four of cups where there was a cup coming in? Well, this is the night that carries that cup. Hello, destiny. Hello, love. Hello, knights. I mean, the Knight of Pentacles, your guardian angel, making sure that the blessings that are meant for you are going to find you. I also feel like this is about divine timing for two people who are about to come together. But I feel like, you know, the Knight of Pentacles again saying I come in the right time. Well, I do feel like there's energy that needed to be cleared. Um, some of you, there is situations you needed to leave um, or situations you needed to close the door to. And that's literally what opens up this next chapter for you. There's so many blessings here. I see the fear, but that's that's normal. That's our humanness. But then the high priestess, that's your intuition. That's where you're saying, you know, that's how you're going to feel a sign through your intuition. Now, you can get signs through numbers. And by the way, if you see like, let's say, 333 or 111, you see it often. Look it up. It's probably an angel message. So just take a moment and look it up. Um you may be surprised at, it'll probably fit you perfectly. But listen, this is talking about love coming in. All right, so perfect time for the romance, angels. I already felt that, to be honest with you. But I love that our guides just brought out the Knight of Cups. So what I was feeling um, was real. And I'm just going to go across the whole table. It is safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. That's what the Six of Pentacles is about. Giving and receiving. I don't feel like you were getting what you deserved 
And even after all this hardship, your spiritual team is still saying it's safe for you to love. It's a reminder to keep your heart open. Um, and it's also telling you that it's about the highest energy of all. Well, because I feel like many of you, um, you're either just beginning on this spiritual journey or you're becoming more and more comfortable with your spirituality, then you understand that it is important to keep your heart open. You know, not everyone's going to break your heart. But as you evolve and your energy evolves, so does your vibration. And when your vibration evolves, well, then the universe must listen to that. And what I mean by that is the universe must meet you right where you're at. So if I'm in an optimistic energy, even if I don't know what blessings are coming my way, I just know that they are. That's the perfect energy for this. All right, what else do we have? Well, hello, true love. True love. This is a romance of a lifetime. And then make the effort. Great love, first of all, great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. Well, you are being guided. You are being guided. And I love that true love just came out. Now, does that protect me from future heartache? What I want you to think about are the seeds that you're planting right now. Because, you know, um, we do have free will. So I could never, I would never say to someone like, yes, I guarantee you that the two of you will live happily f together forever. Well, it certainly has the ability. But we do have the Nine of Swords right here. So think about that. So someone new comes into your life. You feel the passion. I feel, I mean, I think that's undeniable. Um, you may even feel that, oh, this could be the one. But then the Nine of Swords raises its ugly head. And let's assume I take that worry into this next relationship. Is that going to help it or hurt it? Well, first of all, I feel like because chances are your soulmates, not chances are, because you are moving into the will's energy, destiny. It is a soulmate um, or a twin flame. Though I hate to even give titles. You know, it's true love. Let's just call it what it says, true love and great love. Um, but what I was going to say is... You know, we also have the four swords underneath all this. Um, and I do feel like soulmates do help heal each other also. So even though the nine of swords bringing that into like the next relationship can hinder it a little bit. I still feel that someone will make you feel safe. You know what I mean? Like someone will make you feel safe. Your spiritual team is telling you it's safe. But I also feel like whoever else, whoever else is in the lover's energy with you, they're also going to make you feel safe. It's like, do I even want to take anything else? We have forgiving and learning. An important component to moving on. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moment. Forgiving and learning. I feel like that's exactly what the Page of Pentacles was talking about. You've been on this, this journey that is teaching you in some way. And remember, sometimes it, it can be like, you know, how am I in love? Um, am I a taker? Am I a giver? Do I not expect to receive back? You know what I mean? Do I put all the responsibility on my shoulders? Well, that's not love. You know what I mean? That it should be a two-way street. But I do feel like this is saying, like, there's no sense of carrying this forward with you. It doesn't mean you have to pick up the phone and be like, I forgive you. Um... 
It's just forgiving within your own heart. But again, let me read it one more time. As you release and heal the past and you have the healing, you experience more love, true love in your present moment. Three of Wands lives in the present moment. And then we have retreat. It is time for you to disconnect from the world. You know, it's interesting because I feel Father's energy so strongly. Um, you know, I feel it in a loving way, but I also do feel, and I'm saying a father, I mean, you know, it could be like a father figure, but again, it feels generational, like there's something that, um, you know, it reminds me of like um, with my father. And I was a daddy's girl. I loved my dad to death. But I also saw, you know, the true him as it related to my mother. You know, he cheated a lot. Um, he wasn't a drinker, but um, they fought all the time. Um, but it's interesting. The reason why I'm bringing this up is that when I see this image, I feel like someone is like walking hand in hand with their father it can be a big brother but it feels like a spiritual part of your spiritual team who is helping you um you know it's interesting she's got a wedding dress on also yet it's saying retreat it's almost like if my dad is one of my guides me asking my dad should I leave, you know, should I, should I move on from what was? Um, oh, I know what I was going to say to you. Um, so I did take notice of those things, you know, the parts of my father that weren't the greatest. And the first person, um, well, not the first person, but the person I ended up marrying way too young um carried all those traits all those traits that i did not like and maybe it's because i didn't reflect upon it you know what i mean um but yeah some of you may be forgiving a father and you know i also want to say if this is a spirit guide who let's say had like certain issues in life they are healed they are in the light um so whatever guidance they give you it's from the light and who better to understand than someone who's been through it you know as a spirit as part of your spiritual team so anyways this is talking about true love it's asking you to make the effort as it starts to come towards you, you towards it, and knowing that it's safe for you to love. You know, the fool being here so many times, that's, I feel like, what forgiving and learning is for one of the fools, at least, in the willingness to let the past be the past. Hmm. Um, and I just want to say, I also get this feeling that there's someone out there where you're either going to meet someone or you're reconnecting with someone. Um, but it does feel like from a while ago. And you may end up like reconnecting, like, you know, and let's just say in a simple, innocent type way. But then you end up wanting to be together every single day. You know what I mean? It's like, it's you and them now. It's you and them. So once I make this connection, I feel like the connection never ends. Or at least it has the ability not to end because it feels, it feels that good. And again, I feel like if I feel like, ah, oh, is it safe for me to love? I do feel like this other person in the lovers is going to help you in that area and maybe you them but i also feel like your spiritual team is trying to help you um because listen night of cups it's bringing in true love and it's telling you that it's great love and it's worth taking the steps 
that you're guided to take. By the way, the high priestess is right underneath that. And right underneath that, by the way, is the marriage card. The second marriage card. The commitment card. You know, I, I rather call it the commitment card because not everyone's going to run off and get married. Um, some may. Because I do feel like very quickly, very quickly, I'm going to feel this energy. And I may even feel it before it comes in. You know, that's what our spiritual team is so good at. Like letting us feel or getting a glimpse through our intuition of the potential of what can be. Three of Wands is like, I know my ships are coming in. I know they're coming in and I know they're coming in divine timing. And I know one of those cups is going to be true love. But listen, this isn't just a love reading. This is also telling you that you have the ability to create true abundance for yourself. Um, though I do feel like there could have been someone who hindered that somewhat. So you needed to take back control. That's what I really feel like. You're taking back control of your life. And you're letting go of just what you know you need to let go of. You know, even those that maybe I don't want to let go of, but they have their own issues. And I, it's, I'm not here to save them. It's not your job. I feel like it's not that you're being mean. I feel like your spiritual team is saying that. Like, this is their journey. This is their lessons. Don't think that you're here to fix everyone. You know, live a happy life. And know when it's time to close the door. You know, because that's something we have to learn. Again, we run in nine-year cycles. Closing a door, a new door opens. Well, you are stepping upon destiny. You are stepping upon destiny. And look at the beauty that it brings. You know, it's interesting because it's, again, reminding me of like a, ma a life path, um, like a master number 11, 22, 33, where some of us did come down here for these hard lessons. But then the blessing after the lesson. Well, I'll take it. I'll take it for you. All right, guys. I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, you know, I mean, where is there left to go? We're being told, right, that the Knight of Cups, unexpected cup of love over destiny is now true love. This knight is looking right at the lovers. And the lovers both have the chariot. Unlimited potential. Faith is a big part of this. Morals. Um, alignment, you know, knowing how much you have grown and being proud of yourself because of that you can't solve all the world's problems. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a good life. This is what it's offering you. A good life. All right, guys, I'm going to leave there. Um, can't wait to read your comments. I'm telling you, like I, I, when I do a video, like I cannot wait to read your comments. Um, and I know that different people are going to be in different parts of this reading, but use the reading as like a roadmap, you know, maybe I'm over here, but I know it's what I no longer want. So I know now what I have to do. I got to close that door and I got to jump into the fool's energy. You know, and that's what gets the wheel spinning. It's like when you jump into the fool's energy, that means just what this is saying, forgiving and learning. That's what the fool has done. I extract the wisdom. Those are the tools that I now carry with me. That is your sense of power. You don't need to carry the anguish, the hurt, the pain. Got to find a way to let that go. And the four swords is saying that we're that healing you know the healing process will take place but i feel like as soon as this person comes in boom you're healed 
you're healed. Even if the Knight of Swords could raise its ugly head, I still feel like, boom. Because I feel like once we connect, I almost feel like you never disconnect. That's how good it feels. All right. I know I keep saying I'm going to stop. Um, but I am going to leave it there, guys. Um, so I want to thank you ahead of time for your comments. Um, and plus you help others with your comments. Um, I don't know if you realize that or not. I hope you do. But those who've been through like some of this difficulty that's now moving into the energy of the full, or maybe you've been in that energy for a while, your comments help others know that it is possible, that this isn't just a bunch of cards on the table. You know what I mean? Um, and sometimes we just never think we're going to find love again. But love comes in unexpected times. And I feel like being in the fool's energy is a big part of that. But this is destined. This is destined, my friend. This is destiny at its finest. All right. Um, I also want to thank you for your donations. It's truly what keeps this channel alive. Um, I don't know about other Tarot readers, but, you know, very seldom do we get donations. Um, and YouTube does not pay well at all. Matter of fact, I feel like YouTube needs a, um, what's the word, a union. Um, because I don't feel like they're protecting the creator. Um, but, you know, those are my issues. Um, but anyways, I thank you for sharing the video, especially if you're like, ah, maybe it's not talking about you, but you know who it's talking about. And you feel they're ready for it also because, you know, again, honesty. That's the first thing Mother Mary brought out, honesty. Being honest with oneself. And when you are honest with yourself, that's when you're able to make the changes that can really, really create a better life for yourself. So, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Just thank you for all the ways you support this channel. Um, thank you for being you. And thank you for allowing me to be me. I love you guys so much, truly. Um, I really pour my whole heart out in the reading. And I hope you can feel it. That's the main thing. Like, I want you to be able to feel it. So, you'll let me know. I love you guys. Um, happy holidays, by the way. I will see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.